Iron Man is back in Iron Man 2, and just like Stark's Expo, the movie is filled with awesome secrets. Let's whip through it! In Iron Man 2, Tony Stark, played by Robert Downey Jr., is focused on a legacy of world peace, but a nervous military, a power-hungry entrepreneur, and a vengeful Russian physicist look to upset Stark's trajectory, which was begun by his father Howard Stark, played by John Slattery. There's one Howard Stark Easter egg that easily goes unnoticed by the casual viewer, but a die-hard Marvel fan will relish in noticing it. Watch the scene when Stark shares a drink with Samuel L. Jackson's Nick Fury in what's left of his bombed-out bachelor pad. He's sporting a lovely copper and brown robe. That robe would make an appearance three years later in the short film Marvel One-Shot Agent Carter. In that project, the robe is worn by Howard Stark, Tony's father, this time played by Dominic Cooper. There are a couple more father and son themed easter eggs to be found. Did you know that director Jon Favreau let his son have a short little cameo, sort of? In the sequence when Vanko's drones have run amok at Stark's Expo, a young boy in an Iron Man mask stands up to one of the drones with a little help from his hero. The boy behind the mask is Favreau's son. His name? Well, that leads us to another easter egg. At the Grand Prix, Ivan Vanko, played by Mickey Rourke, makes his presence known as Whiplash and terrorizes the event. But before that, Tony wows the crowd by getting behind the wheel of his sponsored car, much to his driver's dismay. Look how mad that guy is! Anyway, you gotta be fast to catch this one, but as Tony speeds off, pause real quick and you'll see an awning that reads Maximilian Favreau. There you have it. However, that expo kid goes by another name. Did you know that the character, not the actor behind the mask, is none other than Peter Parker? Tom Holland himself went on the record saying he spoke with Marvel Studios boss Kevin Feige, who confirmed the fan theory was true. Hungry for another cameo? How about a simple small businessman by the name of Elon Musk? There he is playing himself, greeting Tony just before the big race. Musk helped RDJ with some character research by giving him access to his SpaceX facility. In appreciation for his help, the producers invited him on for this moment on screen. Another moment from this sequence will live on later in the MCU, when Tony and Pepper enter the scene and Pepper learns that he hired Natalie Rushman behind her back. They argue through their teeth while smiling for a photo op. That photo later pops up in Marvel Studios' The Avengers. This one's another toughie. Look very closely in the background of the bar after Tony fixes himself a drink while talking to Loki. Pause. There, you see it? Props from other films show up in this film as well. Die-hard fans of the first Iron Man who scoured the cutscenes will find a payoff in the transaction between Tony and the man selling strawberries on the side of the road. Tony doesn't carry cash on him, so instead he barters his watch for a few bunches of strawberries. That watch comes from a deleted scene in the original film when Tony comes home to find the gift watch waiting for him. The giver? Obadiah Stane, Iron Man's big bad played by Jeff Bridges. One more interesting prop comes at the expense of a production joke. In the original Iron Man, one of the artists from ILM, that is, Industrial Light and Magic, thought it would be fun to add Captain America's shield into an effect shot during the sequence when Gwyneth Paltrow's Pepper Potts walks in on Stark during his clumsy suit removal. See it on the desk behind Stark and to the left? In Iron Man 2, the gag continues. When Agent Coulson, played by Clark Gregg, comes to Tony's to tell him he's been reassigned, he finds the iconic shield and asks Tony, what's this doing here? In true Stark fashion, Tony takes the famous Marvel symbol and humorously reduces it to nothing more than an inconsequential leveling tool for his latest invention. Well, whatever the story is on how Stark got Cap's shield, it's obviously low on S.H.I.E.L.D.'s priority list. Nick Fury is more focused on fulfilling the Avengers initiative, which he goes over with Stark near the end of the film. As Tony learns that Fury only wants him as a consultant, keep a watchful eye on the screens in the background. If the map is any indication, Nick and his team have got their eyes on Africa for another prospective member. Could that mark on the eastern side of Africa be the location of Wakanda, home of T'Challa, aka the Black Panther? Of course, we already know that Natalie Rushman is in on the operation, her real name being Natasha Romanoff, aka Black Widow. She's played by Scarlett Johansson, and Fury's apparently got her infiltrating the ranks of all competitors in the realm of international security, not just Tony. How do we know? Check out her resume when Stark pulls it up while Natasha, I mean Natalie, has boxing mansplained to her by Happy, played by the film's director and actor in his own right, Jon Favreau. As Tony scrolls through her credentials, we see that not only does she work in legal for Stark Industries, but she actually interned at Hammer Industries as well. 
Hammer Industries is run by Justin Hammer, one of Tony's direct and most annoying competitors, played by Sam Rockwell. Hammer scrapes the bottom of just about every barrel to see his visions come to life, even breaking Ivan Vanko out of prison in order to exploit his technology and get the jump on Stark. What a sleaze! Watch him wine and dine Vanko, but pay particularly close attention to the palm side of his hands. See how bronze they are? That's because he obviously uses cheap tanning cream, a cool character choice to symbolize that maybe he's not quite what he seems. Still, Hammer should have his head examined for trying to exploit up in the ranks of both brains and sheer muscle mass. Vanko turns the tables and takes advantage of Hammer's technology for his own gain. Hiding his true intentions, he tells Hammer that for a presentation for Senator Stern, he can only make the drone salute. Did you know that Vanko might actually be making a personal joke, knowing that Hammer doesn't speak Russian? You see, the English word salute sounds like the Russian word solyut, which means firework. And that's quite the understatement for the display the drones rained down on the audience at the Stark Expo. During the presentation, Vanko hacks into the drones as well as the suit built for Lt. Col. James Rhodes, Tony's best friend, played by Terrence Howard. I mean, Don Cheadle. Yeah, more on that in a second. But first, watch as Vanko takes control of Rhodey's HUD display. A fun little detail not only do the graphics turn red, but they switch from English to Russian, giving us no doubt who's in control. So, back to not Terrence Howard. In the first Iron Man, we were given a little tease promising Howard's return as Rhodes, but also as War Machine. When he gets a good look at the silver suit in Tony's lab, he says, Next time, baby. All but guaranteeing his return in the sequel, pending the success of the first film, of course. As we know, Iron Man was a resounding success, but when Rhodes returns in the sequel, it's Don Cheadle who fills the character's shoes. So, what happened? Apparently, because of Iron Man's success, contracts were negotiated, and when Howard's promised take-home was reduced in order to compensate Robert Downey Jr.'s new rate, he jumped ship, which led to some bad blood between the two actors. Fortunately, the two have buried the hatchet, and RDJ even acknowledges the fact that if it wasn't for Howard, he wouldn't have been hired on as Iron Man in the first place. Still, Don Cheadle came in guns blazing in what is a borderline meta entrance. During the government hearing over the security of Stark's technology, Rhodey is called in as a witness. When approached by Tony, it's as if he's not talking to his best friend, but to the Iron Man 2 audience when his first line is, Look, it's me, I'm here, deal with it. I think it's safe to say, with all due respect to Mr. Howard, we haven't just dealt with Cheadle, we've embraced him. Here's a fun little plant from the hearing. Remember when Tony takes control of the AV capabilities in the room and uncovers a secret suit test run by none other than Justin Hammer? In that test, the suit twists all the way around from the waist up, leading to a very painful injury for whomever was inside. Fast forward to 2016 and the release of the Marvel movie Doctor Strange. Strange listens to some prospective cases, and Billy refers to a 35-year-old Air Force colonel whose lower spine got crushed in some kind of experimental armor. Yup, this is that moment living on as a future easter egg. Want another suit-based easter egg? For a guy who doesn't consider himself nostalgic and ordered Penny to destroy his original arc reactor, he sure seems to want to hold on to all the old models of his suits. Take a look at the collection in his home lab. We even see the Mark I. But wait, wasn't the Mark I destroyed in the first movie? That's right, and that's why the one right here is categorized as a reconstruction. Another fun piece of Stark kit introduced in Iron Man 2 is the suitcase suit, the Mark V. Stark suiting up on the track of the Grand Prix is one of the coolest, most memorable parts of the movie. But did you know that the Mark V was actually foreshadowed earlier in the movie? Watch the scene where Penny comes in to complain about Tony's art collection. She follows him through a sort of 3D schematic exhibit of his inventions. Pause as he admits to selling his entire modern art collection to the Boy Scouts of America. Do you see it? The red briefcase outline right there in front of Penny. Another fun little fact about this scene. Notice how Stark comments twice about Penny being sick. That's because Gwyneth Paltrow had a cold during filming and Downey decided to riff on it. Anyway, the Mark V is not the only briefcase of interest in the movie. One of the resources left to him by Nick Fury is a case that belonged to his father. And it has a little easter egg inside. Keep a keen eye underneath the newspaper with the headline, Soviet scientist Vanko defects and you'll be rewarded with a peek at a copy of a Captain America No. 1 comic book. If that wasn't enough, check out what Tony finds in his father's book. See that simple cube schematic? 
If that ain't an early indication of a Tesseract, one of the most important elements in the MCU, I don't know what is. There are more Iron Man 2 and MCU secrets to uncover, and we'll suit up again soon. But for now, I hope you liked this video and found some cool new things you hadn't seen before in Iron Man 2. Be sure to subscribe to Movie Logic for more daily movie trivia, secrets, and Easter eggs.